All right. Welcome to the first episode of Spaz on Tech. Um, if you found this channel and you care about motorcycles, I do have Spaz on Wheels as well, which lacking some content lately, going to get back into it. Hopefully soon. Been trying to get through this new job transition and everything else. But in this job transition, I had to accumulate some new technology and stuff for my home office. So I figured I'd start a channel uh, talking about the technology that I like to use. And today I have a brand new piece of tech. I have not even opened the box yet. And I'm going to be changing a lot of <laughs> how I actually type. Uh, so uh, my my name, normal day job, I'm a technologist. I uh, lead software technology companies and the like. Um, I'm a software engineer by trade. Uh, that is what I've done for a, more than a couple, or now almost a couple decades at this point. And uh, I got a Moonlander from ZSA. And this box looks way too small for a full keyboard. <laughs> uh, so I figured I would unbox it and record while I did. So um, here we go. I'm going to, so I'll show you a little bit of uh, the unboxing at this point. All right. So here we have the box. This will be my first unboxing of this product. So we're going to take a, a look and see how it's packaged. Pretty simple. A uh, little thank you and a get starting little URL to go look at so you can get a 101 on the keyboard. Um, I'll cover all of that uh, in a little bit as well. It comes in a neoprene case. It's nice and compact. Comes with a keycap puller, which is awesome. Nice one, by the way. And uh, then we'll see what's inside. And sorry about the camera autofocus. I probably should have turned off autofocus. Um, I will do better next time. USB-C cable for connecting it. The uh, I think this is a TRS-S cable, which goes between the two segments of the keyboard because this is a split configuration. This will be the left side of the keyboard. And this will be the right side of the keyboard. Nice. All right. And a uh, little quality control approval stuff. And we'll pull out one of the sides. Um, there is the handguard. And this is a columnar layout, so it's straight up and down. There are some extra keycaps to move stuff around, it looks like. That'll be cool. We'll have to look at that and see what I want to do with that. Let's get this out of the way. Let the camera refocus for a second. Yeah, throw that out of the way. And uh, here's the left-hand side. So, really nice. Uh yeah. And I got uh, Kyle Kale Kale Red Kale Red switches is what I went with. These are cherry reds up here. Kale reds. Let me move the mic down. See if you can hear the difference. A little bit higher tone than the uh, cherry reds, but a nice linear feel. It's going to be interesting to learn. One of the things I'm planning on doing here is I'm going to be switching the keyboard layout from QWERTY uh, to Colmac, probably the DHM version, I think is what it's called, and relearning how to type all over again. Um, for reference, I have worked on a split keyboard before. I have worked on the Microsoft Natural one. I have also worked on, uh, I can't remember, Kinesis, I think is Kinesis. Um, it was a the one with the, it's a bowl on both sides. I'll put a picture up in the video, but uh, of, of what I used it before as well. I had one of those. Um, this will be my first time with this keyboard or anything from ZSA. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to test it out. And uh, I'll go through the setup and, and walk everybody through how that goes. And we'll have a conversation about, you know, first, first take. I'm going to do QWERTY right off the bat. I'll swap things out and do a separate video on Colmec. All right, so we're going to go through the website that they gave you inside the box to getting started. We're just going to walk through it so you can see what the experience is like. Um, I have plugged in the keyboard. Um, it is lighting up. It's showing a bunch of colors. It does not appear, and I'm not sure if this is just because the port I decided to hook it up to potentially is not passing through 
or if there's actually software needed to make this keyboard work. Um, my understanding, I thought, was that it would just plug in and work. Actually, let's just try that. We're going to, right now, what I've got it plugged into is a, um, a Corsair mouse pad. So I'm going to run this cord all the way across and plug it directly into my desktop. All right, so it is now connected directly into my desktop. Um, I don't know why OneDrive decided to show up. OneDrive, you can go away now. Goodbye, OneDrive. Thank you. All right. That probably was off screen for you even. It was irritating me. All right. Uh, let's see. Does it type? Oh, it does type. Okay, so so I was dealing with... Ooh, I don't even know what keys do what. Oh, no, this is not good. All right, let's use the other keyboard for a second. Let's go through the one-on-one. -on -one. All right, so... I'm just going to scroll down. Got to remember this is a journey. It's a whole new thing. They show you all the stuff. That's the unboxing video. I've watched this guy plenty of times. I already have everything connected. So if you're running Windows or Linux, just plug the keyboard in. If you're on Mac OS, there's a couple steps to go through. Well, we're on Windows in this case. I will be hooking it up to a Mac as well, so I'll have to do that process as well. Um, positioning, I've already went through that. Yep, important information about the screws. And there, it does a, go in inverse, and I think the sticker sort of went the wrong way, which was weird for me. Um, so maybe one, one small issue here. So, all right, so this is the layout. So just to get my head around it, um, this looks like a Mac layout that they're showing here. So one would assume this is the Windows key. Okay, so... This key here is the Windows key. This must be the uh, the back key. Yep, it is. Um, where did they land escape? I don't see escape. Oh, escape's over here on the right thumb. That's a little different. Uh, not horrible, but different. And, okay, cool. So at least it gives you a nice uh, little picture of the layout. There's some live training. Good. Um, yeah, might have to go through that. We'll have to do a lot of practicing. And um, we can go through a whole bunch of different color settings and all that stuff too. So I believe, and I, I'm not doing a good job of reading, but that just walks you through that. Um, I sort of want to, so Onyx, it, it looks, oh, so, so it's a web version. Okay. Um, this is a good layout tour. And they are doing layers. Um, so you may notice that when you press and hold the Z, you don't get the repeat. So there isn't the Z. Instead, your Z transition easy to each control key. Oh, so that turns into a control key. So if I hold that down and then tap T, hmm, interesting. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Let's go to the next one. And the right one is the right control as well. Okay. And the single quote, the single quote, which is... Over here, if you hold, oh, okay, okay. So, if, so the way that worked, um, interestingly, um, well, let me remember escape keys over here. Is if you 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 hold it down and then you let it go and it it pops the Windows key. So, all right. Hyper is real is really Alt Control Shift and Windows key all held down together. Why would you like something like that? System wide shortcuts. So super S. Nice. Um, so if you have office installed, meh, might be a better choice. All right. So we'll think about what we would do with Hyper down the road. And then there's MEH. It's the little cousin. That's Alt Control Shift uh, held with no command or Windows key. All right. If you happen to be a Vim user, your escape key, which is 
yeah, I'll have to get used to that because I am a Vim user as well. You might expect to find a caps key here, but we've replaced it with the backspace, so that's backspace. Okay, so if that's that's backspace, yep. Okay. There's also a backspace down here. Okay. Your alt key, which is under the X, which to me seems like a little bit of a reach. If you ever wondered how to send an exclamation mark or at or at symbol, the shift key combination is one thing. Number keys do does the trick, just like a regular keyboard. Okay, so that's fine. But where's the shift key? The shift key. Where is the sh oh okay, okay so the shift key is down there. So this should still work like normal. Yes, it does. And then we get to talk about layers. So there's a dual function layer switch key. Tap it to send back tick. Press and hold to activate layer one. When you do this, you'll pop out of layer zero. Another way to get to that layer is through this button. Okay. Tap this key once to go to layer one. I wonder how you know what layer you're in. Is there a lighting? No, oh, there is a light. Okay. That's layer one. So what's in layer one? Symbols and numbers. Okay. And the number pad. All right. So I'm right. I believe I'm in layer one. So if I type the K key, I believe that'll be a five. Yep. It is what it is. Okay. So I'm in, I'm definitely in layer one. All right. And that's where the function keys are, where they replace the numbers. Okay. And here's the numpad directly in. Figure that out. The symbol layout also has some keys. Yeah. I'll have to figure that out. That looks good. Master toggle. You have to turn the lights on and off. Okay. And this is the different animations. Okay. And your brightness button. Okay. Tone down. A little bit there. Okay. Manually shift your hues. Interesting. Okay. You can go down. And these keys let you explore the colors. Okay. Layer two is next to the L key. Uh, which is semicolon to go to layer two. Moon Lumer can beep. Nope, not gonna turn that on. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. We're not gonna do any of that. Mouse related, emulate pointers, not doing that right now. Play music, all that stuff, all those toggles. Okay, I have a lot of time to spend looking at that now. And then I need to figure out how to get out of <laughs> layer one now. Um, which if I remember, if I go back to layer zero, so if I'm on layer one right now, layer one was that. When I'm on layer one, how do I go back? All right, so theoretically it's this one. Let's see what I'm in. I'm actually just gonna see if I can, I'm just gonna see if I can even type. Nope, I am still in layer one. So now I've got to figure out how to get out of layers. All right, so how do we get out of, how do we get back to layer zero? Maybe, what's this key down here? That's disabled. This key is disabled, that key is disabled. That key is disabled. Key is disabled. 
Yeah, so it's a momentary toggle. So how do I, how do you back out of a layer? It's not very, that was not very clear to me. Because we're, I believe I'm at layer one right now. And I don't see a key to get out of layer one. Oh, uh, this one got me out of out of it. I believe I'm back into and all right. I, I'm I'm out of it. Okay, so if I do, let's do this. I'm just gonna. Looks like I got caps lock on. Don't know how I got there. Either way. I'm going to bring up Notepad just so I can see what I'm typing. And uh, we'll put this we'll put this over here just so we can so you can see what I'm experiencing. So right now I am in all caps, and I didn't think there was a caps key. So that's a backspace. So let's go back to layer one. Where did they put the caps key? Okay. I don't see a caps lock op option. So I just did it on the other keyboard. So now I need to figure out how did I do caps lock in this? Was there a caps lock key somewhere along the road? I don't see a caps lock here. So somehow going to layer one, let's go layer one. So if I'm in layer one, we're now a number pad on the right, symbols on the left. We are in this, we are in this mode right now. If I hit this key to exit, I'm back. Okay. So that's not how I ended up getting. That's enter. That's backspace. That looks like a tab. So on layer zero, tab, alt, windows, backspace, space, enter, escape key. Not too bad. If I hit, so this key, momentary tally activates the selected layer, but only as long as the key, this key is pressed. Okay, interesting. Let's play the layout. Um, is there a layout? We'll go through the layout tour again. Yeah, let's do this. Let's go into live training. All right. Connect up. Oh, this is going to be much better. Much better. All right, cool. So now we're in training mode, so. But I don't see it telling me it's pressing anything. Pre oh, we got to press. There's a key we have to press. Where is that key? Okay, we got to press, press this key right here. All right. How would you like to train? So this is about getting abilities to type and all that kind of stuff. Okay. We'll look at pros. See if I can type on this thing. I gotta figure out where the shift keys are. But my hand's in the wrong positioning. And that is not a space key. Yeah, this is going to take me a little bit to get used to. I actually went through a very similar trans uh, sort of transition when I switched to the Kinesis one. Let's 
I mean, it's not that much different. There's just some spacing differences that are messing with my ability. Oops. Time's up. One thing I don't right now that I'm having a problem with is the space bar, not being able to hit it with both thumbs. So there might be, I may want to change that, but um, there's got to be, a, there's probably a reason for why they put that there, but um, I'm trying to remember how the kinesis was set up because I, that only had a space bar, I believe on one side as well. And it took me a little bit to get used to, but. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so this is one of the exercises you can go through. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna completely go through these. There's one more, I guess I should maybe just Go through it quick. The number one thing is to get better to the point where I don't make mistakes like the red ones that I'm doing right now. Yeah, that space bar is tripping me out because I think I always used my right one more my right thumb for that and I'm having to use my left thumb a little bit more than I expected So it'll be interesting to, to play around with Colmac next and really lose track of my ability to type at all because I can already tell this is a little bit different. So uh, so you want to reach 95% accuracy? I reached 94. Um, my words per minute, meh. Uh, air breakdown, man, I hit the space bar wrong a lot. Um, N, I missed a little bit too because of hand positioning. But in general, eh, not too bad. I like it. All right. So I'll come back to you with my formal feedback as soon as I have a little bit more time with the keyboard. But there's your introduction to sort of just the start of, of using this keyboard. I'm right now in default, default layout. I'll be messing around with layouts. Need to learn a little bit of the navigation of it a little bit better. Um, I'll probably do another video where I'll try to find a way to do two cameras. I'll probably have to use my phone or something, but where I can have a camera over top of the keyboard um, so you can watch uh, my hand movements on the keyboard as well um, while I'm working with the software. So uh, that is the ZSA Moonlander, my first completely, you know, virgin attempt at using it. Uh, and that was literally just recorded straight. I did not do any testing beforehand. I just plugged it in and recorded uh, my reaction. So hopefully this benefits somebody else who's looking at the keyboard. I'll do a couple more videos on this as I go forward in my progression with the ZSA Moonlander. So uh, thank you for tuning in. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe, and uh, I'll make more content. And give me feedback in the comments. A lot of work to do on, on doing this more in my office style recording versus my moto vlog stuff that I do. Uh, I will keep the two channels completely separate. Uh, anything motorcycle related will stay on that channel, and everything technology will stay on this channel. When it comes to motorcycle tech, that'll be in the motorcycle channel. If it's computers or home technology, that'll be where it comes into the Spaz on Tech channel. So I'm Spaz. I hope you enjoyed the content and uh, see you next time.